morning, everybody. Happy Mother's Day. If you're watching us online, happy Mother's Day. Where are you? I hope you're hanging out with mom, and it's going to be a good day to be in the house of the Lord today. We're excited about you being here. Why don't you stand with us this morning as we go to the Lord in prayer, and then we're going to enter into worship. Father, we just thank you for the day. Thank you for what is before us. Thank you for the opportunity that we have today to come into your house. We're going to celebrate our moms today. We're going to celebrate the women folk today in this place. And Lord, we give you praise because of what you are going to do and what you have already done even this week. I bless you, Father. I give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Are you ready to worship the Lord? Has he been good to you this week? Yes, yes he has. Let's go ahead and start. Thank you, Father. When all I see is the battle, you see my victory. When all I see is the mountain, you see a mountain move. And as I walk through the shadow, your love surrounds me. There's nothing to fear now, for I am safe. So when I fight, I'll fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. Oh God, the battle belongs to you and every fear I lay at your feet. I'll sing through the night. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. And if you are for me, who can be against me? For Jesus, there's nothing impossible for you. When all I see are the ashes, you see the beauty. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadow. You win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. Almighty fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine. I 
Thank you, Father. We bless you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We bless you that you are still the lion and the lamb. We can trust you, Lord. We speak Jesus over the needs of the world today. I 
just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind because I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus I just want to speak the name of Jesus till every dark addiction starts to break declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus your name is power and your name is healing your name is life break every stronghold shine through the shadow Cause I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountains. 
Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy, Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy, Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Hallelujah, we speak your name, Jesus. Jesus. You know, just as we're singing that, that worship song and we're singing about you know, the things that concern us, the things in our world. And let's focus in a little bit closer, our families. And I know as we sang those words, you were thinking about a family member that needs Jesus or has a need in their life that they need Jesus to meet. And I want us to focus our prayer today on that. You know, on this very special Mother's Day, Women's Day. I know the heart of a mother because I have two children. And I want nothing more than my two children to succeed in every way. Emotionally, physically, and spiritually, I want them to succeed. And I know some of you moms out there are praying for your child or a grandchild or someone in your family that you are burdened for, whatever that need might be. So we, I, I just want you to lift that up to the Lord today. God, we come to you. And Lord, I love when I read in the scripture about the value that women are in your eyes, Lord, because you appeared first to women in your resurrection, Lord. That makes us feel really special to you. But God, you hear the cries of the mothers and the hearts of these mothers here today and the women here today, Lord. And Lord, we have a family member that needs a touch from you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, we need miracles in our families. And Lord, just as we have sung, we speak the name of Jesus, the powerful name of Jesus, that in your word it says every knee must bow to the name of Jesus. So God, we lift up our families to you today. And God, we thank you for the miracle that awaits. And Lord, we're ready to tell that testimony of the miraculous power of Jesus Christ in their lives and in our lives. Oh, we're grateful, Father, for all that you've blessed us with. We're grateful for every woman, every mother here today, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for being our savior, Oh, thank you for being our Savior. And Lord, thank you for being our Father God. We worship you. We love you. Amen. Amen. Welcome to the Brownstone Church. Would you greet someone around you and give a woman a nice handshake or a smile or a hug?
thought it was, it was something I did. <laughs> and I just want, can we just give a round of applause to all the people that work in our technical? They keep us going every week. They keep us online, and it's such a blessing. And I always enjoy when I can't attend Brownstone. We're out of town. I love that I can tune right in and see my church family. And I just want to shout out to Scott and to Sarah and Marilyn and Hilda. She's probably listening in South Africa right now, but just how much we appreciate all of you that help us. So today's a very special day. It's Mother's Day, um, Women's Day, and I, I love this because I don't know why I'm so emotional when I talk. I don't know, guys. It's just me. But um, I love that we can honor women today. And it's just, to me, it's just an honor to be a woman. And I love to read Psalm, um, Proverbs 31. And I, I've often laughed and probably told you before that it used to really intimidate me when I read that scripture because I'm like, ooh, she buys stuff. She does. She takes care of everyone. She's giving out revelation truth to feed others, she, you know. But now I read that and I get excited because to me, I, um, as I look out in this congregation, I see in every one of these verses someone, I could call names one after the other, of you ladies out there where I see the gifts that you bring to the body of Christ and to your families and to your communities. And so... It's kind of exciting to me to read the scripture. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I do encourage you to go home today and read Proverbs 31 and just know that God sees you as a virtuous woman who he is proud of. And um, we honor you today and thank you for all that you do for your families, for those around you, for your communities, and for this church. And so we want to honor the ladies today um, with, okay, y'all, these cookies are beautiful. They're beautiful. And sometimes I think, oh, it's so beautiful. It doesn't taste good. Quite wrong. Quite wrong. These are from the Glitz Bakery in Fort Worth, freshly made um, by some ladies there and to hand decorated. And they are so good that I broke a sugar fast because yesterday we were putting these in the packages and Steve and I dropped one and Steve said, uh-oh, I guess we're going to have to eat it. And we did. We ate it. So then we dropped But two. anyway, <laughs> we didn't want the dogs to get it. <laughs> but I want each of you ladies to pick up a cookie. And then I'm going to be in the back today. Um, three of my favorite places to shop. Love me some Hobby Lobby. Always can find something at Target. And girls, on Saturday mornings, my place to go is the Home Depot. So, whatever floats your boat, you can have, we want you to take one gift card for yourself, and that is our appreciation for you ladies from the Brownstone Church. God bless each of you. I hope you feel special. I f hope you feel celebrated, and I hope your husband takes you somewhere really wonderful to eat today. Yes, he will. <laughs> yes, he will. You know, you forgot to mention that the Psalms 31 woman had servants. Yes, she did have servants. That's, that's, that's right. So that's part of the reason that sometimes women have always been intimidated by the Psalm 31 woman. But when you read that, it says, and she had servants. So now you can put yourself in the perspective, aside from your husband, who is the best servant of all, no doubt, I'm sure. <laughs> Uh, but uh, it's, uh, that's, that's the Psalm 31. It's awesome to have you guys all here today. And uh, Mother's Day is one of those days that in traditional churches, everybody comes home. Uh, if, if it's an old, if it's a church that's been around a long time, a lot of people come home. When it's a new church like we are, people go elsewhere to the traditional church. So if you look around, you're seeing somebody that's missing today, you'll know where they are. They're probably at the traditional place that they celebrate Mother's Day. I'm grateful that you chose this, this tradition today to be right here in the Brownstone Church. And we're excited that you are here today. I, uh, I, 
want you to know a little bit about what's going on at Brownstone Church. If you're a guest with us today, we'd love for you to fill out a guest card and drop it in that little black box back there. We're in the middle of renovating this place. As a matter of fact, next week you get to sit on some brand new chairs. They're coming in this week. We're picking them up on Wednesday. So uh, these chairs will go downstairs and live in the basement for the children and for all the events that we have down there. And so I'm excited for that. We are still waiting on some carpet. We've got some touch-up painting to do that tomorrow we'll, I'll show them what I'm looking for up close and personal on the paint job. Um, it's the problem when you were a, an ex-painter in your life. You know what straight looks like. <laughs> and not everybody does. But tomorrow they're going to get a lesson from Pastor Steve on what straight looks like. And it's going to be next week things are going to be a little straighter. <laughs> and uh, I think that's going to be great. Um, and I'll stay, uh, I'll, be a ni- I'll be nice about it, <laughs> uh, probably. Um, so uh, it's going to be a great day uh, to be here. This past week, we celebrated with uh, National Day of Prayer, and many of the churches and the pastors in this area came together and just prayed over some events. And, uh, you know, I-, I realize that on Mother's Day, it's always kind of a bittersweet day. Um, uh, some of you may have lost a mom. It recently, you may have lost a mom this year. One of the uh, speakers at the National Day of Prayer breakfast that we had on Thursday was uh, the director of one of the local funeral homes here in Weatherford. And he said this year they've already, in the past year, they did 550 funerals. And so there's grieving families all over, and we prayed specifically for that. But that's just one of the funeral homes. That's not counting the one across the street and some of the others, but that's just one of the ones. So I know that during this time of year, during this celebration of mothers, that it's a difficult time. Maybe you uh, have lost a mom or a grandmother recently, or it's been difficult. Well, we want you to know we understand, and we are uh, we grieve with you, and we want you to know that we're here for you, and we believe that God has got great things in store for you, and, and I'm praying that the Lord will minister to you today through the message. Uh, before I begin, I, I would like to uh, show you a video. a hand this morning. Thank you. (laughs) Mother's Day is celebrated throughout the world on various days and in various ways, but in 1914, President Woodrow Wilson declared the second Sunday in May to be Mother's Day in the United States. One of the people who persuaded him to make this a holiday was Anna Jarvis, who, whose mother conceived the, of the idea back in the Civil War, right after the Civil War. She was, thought it was a way to bring uh, the North and the South moms together, particularly those who had lost sons in the war. And it was a wonderful idea. And many years later, all the way up to 1914, it took, and then the president signed it into law, or into he, he signed it and made a declaration. But once Mother's Day became a national holiday, Miss Jarvis, who was never married, spent the rest of her life trying to convince the president to cancel the celebration because of the commercialization that had taken over by all of the other companies, the flowers and all the people that uh, did everything. How many of you have uh, ever come up with a great idea and then somebody changed your idea? (laughs) 
Um, yeah, we've all had something like that happen in our life where, where somebody took your original idea and they thought they were improving on it, but it kind of messed it up for you. And, you know, you just it, it, the, the copy was not as good as the original. I know uh, uh, we used to attend a restaurant that we particularly loved, until it, and it was great. And then it got bought out by a large corporation. It became a part of a much bigger thing, and it never tasted the same after that. I don't know how that happens. Well, it's possible to come up with a great idea only to have somebody else take it and change it from its original intent. But today I'm going to speak to you about God's original plan for women. Before we begin, why don't you pray this prayer with me? Say, Lord Jesus, speak to me loud and clear. I am listening. Man came home from work one afternoon and found his three small children outside, still in their pajamas, playing in the mud. Some of their toys were scattered across the lawn and on the driveway. The door of his wife's car was wide open, and so was the front door of their house. Surprised at this, he rushed inside and was confronted with evidence of complete disarray. A lamp had been knocked over, the TV was loudly blaring on a cartoon channel, and the family room was littered with toys and children's clothing. He went into the kitchen. The sink was filled with dirty dishes. Breakfast food had been spilled on the counter. The refrigerator door was open and dog food was scattered all over the floor. Very concerned now, he, fearing the worst, he frantically began looking for his wife, heading up the stairs, stepping over toys and more piles of clothes as he went. He was worried she might be ill or something serious had happened to her. Rushing into the bedroom, he saw her, still in her pajamas. She was laying there, curled up on the bed, reading a novel. She looked up, smiled at him, and asked how his day had been. Completely bewildered, he asked. He looked at her and said, what happened here today? Again, she smiled and then answered, you know, every day when you come home from work and you ask me what in the world I do all day long? Yes, he said. She said, well, today I didn't do it. <laughs> Can you imagine what would happen if mothers went on strike? Can you imagine the ca catastrophic place the world would be in? Every year for the last 61 years, I've heard a Mother's Day message. I've preached some of them. I've listened to a lot more. And as I was preparing this one this week, I, I read a lot more. But I get the sense that God wants to speak to moms, mothers, women, and all of us today. So when God does anything, he does it on purpose uh, and for a purpose. When God created man, he created him in his image. And I believe the word of God reveals that God was seeking a relationship with mankind. And he wanted man to know him and to love him as he loved man. After a while, he realized that Adam, which was the sole man in the world, was alone. And his answer to the problem of Adam's loneliness was to create Eve from the very rib bone of Adam. This wasn't an accident. It wasn't a mistake. It wasn't a great second idea. I believe he just needed to give man a head start because it wasn't going to take woman very long to come up to speed on this thing called the human race. So I think it's very clear that God had original intention for women. We're going to look at three things that God intended for women to be. And uh, here we go. First... I believe the first thing the Bible tells us about women is that he intended for them to be helpers. Look, Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. This is from the Amplified Bible. Now the Lord God said, it is not good or beneficial for the man to be alone. I will make him a helper, one who balances him, a counterpart who is suitable and complementary for him. Now, if you look at all the translations of the Bible, and I looked at a bunch of them this week, the word that is used there is helper. Now, when translating this verse, uh, that's what they said. That's the word that God made. He, he said, I'm going, to make them, I'm going to make Adam a helper. But when you think about being a helper, sometimes you think, well, maybe a helper is subordinate to the person they're helping. But that's not the case. Just because you're helping someone doesn't make you less than the one you're helping. Eve was not created from Adam's foot to be walked on or from his head to rule over him, but from his rib to be his equal. Mothers know something about helping. I heard about a little girl, her name was Emily. She came home from school late one afternoon, and her mother asked her why she was late. Emily said, Susie dropped her doll, and it broke. Her mother said, so you stayed to help her fix your doll? Emily said, no, it couldn't be fixed. I stayed with her to help her cry. Now, now who, where do you learn something like that? You don't learn it from Dad. <laughs> he just says, 
<laughs> rub some dirt on it. I mean, you know, that's where men are. We're in a little different place. But women have a way of just teaching people how to care. Mothers have a better sense of caring and emotional support than fathers do. Men are notorious for, like I say, saying just rub some dirt on it. The Apostle Paul has often been accused of being chauvinistic because of some of his writings concerning women's roles in the church. But when you read Romans chapter 16, you discover six women that he admires and he thanks them for their help during his time in Rome. Here's just one of them. It's found in Romans chapter 16, verse 1 and 2. He said, I commend to you our sister. Phoebe, who is a deacon in the church at Sincrea. Welcome her in the Lord as one who is worthy of honor among God's people. Help her in whatever she needs, for she has been helpful to many and especially to me. Yeah, women have always been helpers because God planned it that way. Ladies, have you ever considered why you help your husband, you help children, parents, co-workers, friends, and even total strangers? Have you ever wondered why you do some of the things that you do? Well, the fact is, it was God's original intent, and you're simply doing something that comes natural. God intended for you to help people. And so, thank you all for following God's original intention for you. You are a helper. The second thing that God said about women is that they were to be companions. Genesis chapter 2, verse 21 through 24. This is all happens prior, prior to the fall, by the way. This is how we know it was God's original intention. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. While the man slept, the Lord God took out one of the man's ribs and closed up the opening. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib and brought her to the man. At last, the man exclaimed, This one is bone from my bone and flesh from my flesh. She will be called woman because she was taken from man. This explains why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife, and the two are united in one. Now, the reason Adam was so excited about that is because up till now, he had just been looking at animals. They didn't look like him. He'd been naming them giraffe, elephant, zebra, sloth. I mean, whatever. He just was, he was just naming stuff, right? He, nothing looked like him. But suddenly, this one looked like him. Not exactly like him, but really close. And he thought she looked good. Whoa, man. I mean, you know, that was... That was so that's how it all happened, and that's why. So companionship is different than being a helper. Companionship goes deeper with friendship, and it's certainly more intimate with a spouse. You see, a wonderful companion makes the journey sweeter. A powerful companion relieves the fear of being alone. A wise companion will protect you from making poor choices. A godly companion will storm the gates of hell with you. Don't you love it when you have friends that fall into one of those categories? Aren't there certain people that you like traveling with? Aren't there certain people you like going shopping with? Aren't there certain people that you would like to go into a bar fight with? And that was just to... <laughs> Not to say that you're going into a bar or having a fight. But if you're a police officer like my friend used to be back there, there's certain police officers that he would have wanted to be in certain situations with. I'd like for them to be really tall, really huge, and, you know, and they go first. <laughs> go in and after you. <laughs> I mean, there are certain people that you want in certain things. There are certain people you call on when you have certain needs in your life, don't you? Those are the wonderful companions that God has put in your life. So, ladies, let me ask you this question. What kind of companion are you? Are you wonderful? Are you powerful? Are you wise? Are you godly? Did you know that you possess all of those traits through the power of the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit, you see, is the greatest companion that you will ever have in your life. He's the counselor, the comforter. The Greek word that is used for the Holy Spirit is one called paraclete, and it means one who comes alongside of. And that's the comforter. That's the Holy Spirit. You need women to tap into the power of the Holy Spirit that is there for you as you become the greatest companion that you can possibly be to the people that you're traveling through life with. They may be children, they may be your spouse, they may be your parents, they may be siblings, they just may be friends. You never know who these folks are. We have all, we probably have many of those in our lives, but that is how you learn to be a good companion is follow the, it, the direction of the Holy Spirit. 
I'm thankful for great companions. I'm thankful that God gave me a wonderful companion over 35 years ago. This next year, we'll be celebrating our 39th year, and it's been wonderful. I like traveling with her better than anybody else. I like shopping with her better than anybody else because she knows I can always sit outside and wait. And she lets me. This is good. This is good. Third thing. They were to be influencers. Influencers. Now, the Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 3, the serpent was the shrewdest of all the wild animals the Lord God had made. One day he asked the woman, did God really say you must not eat the fruit from any of the trees in the garden? Of course we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, the woman replied. It's only the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden that we're not allowed to eat. God said you must not eat it or even touch it. Paul's right there. Or even touch it? Boy, you could go down that path a long way, couldn't you? Isn't that something how sin works in our lives? Some people say, I don't want to just touch it. I want to hold it. I want to think about it. I want to get as close to it as I can. But God said, don't even touch that. That's a different story, a different message for another time. We'll keep going. If you do, you will die. You will not die, the serpent replied to the woman. God knows that your eyes will be opened as soon as you eat it, and you will be like God, knowing both good and evil. The woman was convinced. Pause right there and let that sink in. The woman was convinced. Men, have you ever tried to unconvince your wife of something? (laughs) She was convinced. And Eve was the first woman. She was convinced. She saw that the tree was beautiful and its fruit looked delicious, and she wanted the wisdom it gave her. So she took some of the fruit and ate it. Then she gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate it too. Now, you don't know exactly all the minutia of this story, all the little details, what we don't, we don't know how much time it happened from the time that Eve ate and from the time that she gave it to Adam. We don't know how much persuasion she had to do. We don't know all those details. What we do know is that she influenced him. You see, Eve was the first target that Satan went after. She made the choice to sin because she was convinced by what Satan told her. But Adam made the choice to sin because Eve influenced or persuaded him. Talked him into it. I believe that Satan still attacks women today. Why? Because he knows that every woman possesses the ability to influence everybody else in their lives. Perhaps you've heard the story or the the word, if mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy, right? That's true. Because women set the tone in the home. Women, you set the tone in the home. Women can make gloomy days better, or she can make sunny skies gray. She can convince a two-year-old to eat broccoli, and she can convince a 40-year-old to go to the dentist. She possesses the skills to influence generations to come because she's influencing the next one. It's like the family was driving home from church one day after their children had been dedicated in church. The little boy was crying in the back seat, and his parents kept asking him why. And finally, through tears, he said, The preacher said that he wanted us to be raised in a godly home with godly parents, but I want to stay with you guys. <laughs> what are we, how are we influencing our kids? How are we doing it? What are we doing? Thomas Edison credited his mother for steering him into the life of an inventor because she understood his bent. She understood his potential. She understood that he thought different than her other children. She knew there was something special about him. He was weird, no doubt, when he was a kid because he was so unique and he had such an incredible mind. But she understood his strengths and his weaknesses and she influenced him in ways that he knew would help him to achieve the greatest results. Abraham Lincoln said this, all that I am or ever hope to be, I owe to my angel mother. I like what Jill Churchill said. I think I put it up here. There's no way to be a perfect mother and a million ways to be a good one. 
Tony Campolo was a great writer, a Christian author, and he used to be on the faculty of the University of Pennsylvania. There were gatherings from time to time in which faculty members brought their spouses. Inevitably, some woman lawyer or sociologist or businesswoman would confront his wife with a question and they would say, and what is it that you do, my dear? He said, my wife, who is one of the most brilliantly articulate individuals I know, had a great response. She would always say this, I'm socializing two homo sapiens in the dominant values of the Judeo-Christian tradition in order that they might be instruments for the transformation of the social order into teleologically prescribed utopia inherent in the eschaton. After that, she would follow with, and what is it that you do? And that would kind of shut them down. Instead of just saying, I'm a mother, <laughs> she would say, this is what I'm doing. I've got, and she had a name. How many of you think that motherhood is a hard job? Joy and I recently went over to the Netherlands to spend time with our daughter and son-in-law who just had their second little boy. And they've got two that were under the age of two when the second one was born. And so we went over to give them a little bit of respite, a little rest. And... Uh, I, as a male, can tell you it is hard. You can't reason with a two-year-old and you can't reason with a six-week-old. They just don't, there's no reason. There's no reason why they should have done that that early. I don't know, but that's just how that, that works. They're, they're little. You love these children, but it's hard. I heard about a mom who used to, and I think it was one of Charles Wesley, his, him and his brother uh, were huge in the Methodist church. Uh, their mother had a lot of kids. And once a day, she would just bring her apron over her head and sit in a chair, and she'd just put her apron over her head to pray. And that's where she got alone. And once mother's apron was over her head, the children knew, don't bother mother. She was praying. She might have been sleeping, for all I know. She could have been doing anything. She just wanted some alone time, right, is what she was wanting. But she was influencing her children even then. And I think that it's a difficult job being a mother. It's very hard. I, they are certainly a force to be reckoned with. Mothers are certainly a force of influence in the lives of their children. Ladies, your influence goes well above your knowledge of motherhood. Uh, sometimes when women find out they're pregnant, they suddenly start reading everything and they suddenly try to figure it all out. And, and you, you, then after you've had a failure or two along the way after the children are born, it's, it's easy to look down on yourself and say, I, I'm just, I, I'm, I'm not a good mom. There, there's things I, I could have done better. Hey, there's things we all could have done better. If you're a parent, you've had failures. If, if you're not a parent, you've had failures. <laughs> Let's face it, we've all had failures. Everybody's had things they go, man, I wish I'd have done that differently. I wish, I wish I'd have, I had a do-over in that. Well, it's okay. You can start today doing all the things. It's never too late to influence someone else. It's never too late to influence those people that are in your life. I, I read this story, and I felt like this was apropos for us today. The young mother set her foot on the path of life. Is the way long, she asked. Her guide answered, oh yes, and the way is hard, and you will be old before you reach the end of it, but the end will be better than the beginning. But the young mother was happy, and she did not believe anything could be better than these years. So she played with her children and gathered flowers for them along the way. The sun shone on them, life was good, and the young mother said, nothing will ever be better than this. Then night came and storm and the path was dark and the children shook with fear and cold and the mother drew them close and covered them with her cloak. The mother said, the children said, oh mother, we're not afraid for you are near and no harm can come. The mother said, this is better than the brightest of day for I have taught my children courage. Morning came and there was a hill ahead and the children climbed and grew weary. But she said to them, a little patience and we'll soon be there. So the children climbed, and when they reached the top, they said, We could not have done it without you, mother. And the mother, when she lay down that night, looked up at the stars and said, This is a better day than the last, for my children have learned perseverance in the face of difficulty. Yesterday I gave them courage. Today I have given them strength. With the next day came strange clouds which darkened the earth, clouds of war and hatred and evil, and the children groped and stumbled. So the mother said, Look up, lift your eyes to the light. The children looked up and saw above the clouds an everlasting glory, and it guided them and brought them beyond the darkness. That night, the mother said, 
this is the best day of all, for I have shown my children God. The days went on and weeks and months and years, and the mother grew old and frail, but her children were strong and tall and walked with courage. And when the way was hard, they helped their mother, and when the way was rough, they lifted her, for she was light as a feather. And at last they came to a golden gate flung wide open. The mother said to them, I have reached the end of my journey, and now I know that the end is better than the beginning, for my children can walk alone and their children after them. The children said, you will always walk with us, mother, even when you have gone through the gates. And they stood and watched her as she went alone, and the gates closed after her, and they said, we cannot see her, but she is with us still. A mother like ours will always be much more than just a memory. Ladies, we honor you today. We honor you because some of you are, are mothers. This is Mother's Day after all. But we honor all of our women today because sometimes mothers are naturally mothers. They, they had children biologically and others became mothers just because they influenced the generation. They, sometimes children are adopted. Sometimes you just took on the responsibility of a parent even for a child who did not have one. I want you to know that we honor you today and I want to pray for you today. All the ladies in this place. So I'm going to ask you to bow your head. We're going to speak a blessing over you today. And I'm going to pray over you today. Lord, for these ladies, for these moms, I ask today for a double portion of wisdom and strength. Would you give them creative ideas? Powerful words of encouragement, happy children, loving husbands and friends. May they continue to be your hands and feet in this world as they influence the generations that follow them. May they enjoy the journey and find joy even in the process. Let their light shine bright long after they've walked through the gates of glory. And Holy Spirit, I ask that you will guide them as they guide others. I pray, Father, that in the moments that we have those of us who still have moms that are alive I pray that we would take those moments and spend them with our moms we know our moms aren't perfect but we know that you blessed us with them we owe what we are today to their influence in our lives and I pray Father that we would be able to influence our moms that we would be able to speak back into our moms because we realize some of our mothers today are not sure that they did everything right. Lord, I pray that you would give us the words to say even to our mothers that would reveal to them that they've done their best and that you still think they're the greatest mom. We do too. Lord, I speak to the women in this place today as they go forth from this place. Lord, I pray that you would give them eyes to see ways in which they can help others. I pray that you would help them to be the kind of companions that others would want to travel with. And, and I pray, Father, that you would let them influence generation after generation. Lord, let them not just be women who are following men, but Lord, let them be women who are strong and let them help men accomplish what they have been called to accomplish. Lord, you've asked women to accomplish great things. And your word is so powerful because it gives us so many examples of strong women. And I thank you for every one of them. I thank you for the women in my life. I thank you for the, the, the grandmothers and the mothers. And I thank you for my daughters, Lord, and my granddaughter. And I thank you for just women today. Thank you that you saw fit to place them in our lives. We bless them today in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Ladies, thank you for being who you are. Thank you for just being a, the greatest possible version of yourself that you will ever be. We love you. And uh, we want you to know that you, you are loved today by the Brownstone Church. Don't forget to get your <clears throat> cookies because if you don't, I will be forced to eat yet another one. And they are awesome. Uh, and uh, those gift cards are for you. And I think you will, uh, you'll find something there. Why don't you stand with us this morning? I'm going to speak a blessing over you. 
I chose to go shorter today because I know some of you have a special lunch date with your mom, and I want you to get there on time. Joy will be in the back, and she will help you with those gifts, and so we are thank, thank you for that. It's going to be a great week. It's going to be starting to be warm. Today, about 100 degrees. So uh, thank you for being in this cool place with us. Why don't you stretch your hands out? I'm going to speak a blessing over you today. Now, may the Lord bless you on this Mother's Day. May you remember the wonderful times that you have spent with your mom. May you be thankful for the things they taught you and even for the things they didn't. May you strive to help others in any way that you can. May, you, may your compassion always be welcomed. May your companionship also be welcomed. And may the power of your influence change the world as you become all that God intended for you to be. Have a great week, everybody. We'll see you next Sunday. You are my chance.